If you're familiar with R&B music from the 1990s, then we're willing to bet that you know exactly what song comes to mind when we mention this group, High Five. This old-school group became a massive success after their self-titled debut album was released. Their beautiful and soulful hit, I Can't Wait Another Minute, is sometimes forgotten and overshadowed by the meteoric success of their single, I Like The Way, The Kissing Game, which was one of the best R&B songs of the decade and, dare we say, stands the test of time, just as well as another hit from those days, the hugely successful Can We Talk by Tevin Campbell. During the 1990s, the group was not only popular, but beloved, with a platinum album under their belt as proof. However, though they had really high moments, they also experienced very low, tragic ones. High Five had its origins in Waco, Texas. The group was formed in 1989 by four friends, Tony Thompson, who was born in Waco but spent a lot of his formative years in Oklahoma City, Roderick Poo Clark, Marcus Sanders, and Russell Neal. Toriano Easley, who would join the group just a tad bit later, was also from Oklahoma City. Tony, Pooh, Russell, and Marcus all discovered their passion for music at a very young age, with some having sung in their local church since they were as young as eight. As they grew older, the friends picked up an interest in singing R&B music, and although they weren't sure how to go about it, they decided to form a group. Together, they started performing at local talent shows, and one day, they finally got the attention that they had always wanted. After one of their performances, a local producer approached them and promised to make their musical dreams a reality. After that incident, the young men officially became a group, and soon afterwards, just like they dreamed of, were soon signed by Jive Records. But they hadn't become High Five just yet. They were registered under a different name until their fifth member, Toriano Easley, finally joined the group. Then they took on the name High Five and immediately started working on their debut album. But little did they know that their whole lives were about to take a completely different turn. In late 1989, shortly after signing to Jive Records, the group started working on their self-titled debut album, which was released the following year. Produced by super producer and the originator of the new Jack Swing sound, Teddy Riley, the album was an instant smash, and several tracks from it debuted on Billboard's Top 10 list. These included I Just Can't Handle It, which debuted at number 10, I Can't Wait Another Minute, which peaked at number 1, and again, the people's favorite, I Like the Way, The Kissing Game, which went straight to number 1 on both the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 and the U.S. Hot R&B slash Hip Hop Songs chart. Their top single, I Like the Way, The Kissing Game, went on to be one of the biggest R&B singles of all time, and it remains the band's biggest hit to date. Their debut album was so popular that it gained international attention, became a certified platinum, and thrusted the group into stardom. Two years later, the group released a second album, Keep It Going On. Although not as successful as their first album, A couple of songs from the album also made it to the top spots on the Billboard charts. For example, arguably their second most well-known hit of all time, She's Playing Hard to Get, peaked at number two on the R&B charts, and Quality Time, which was written by the R&B legend R. Kelly, made it to number three on the same chart. In 1993, High Five emerged with a third album, and some of their singles were featured on the soundtrack of blockbuster movies like Sister Act 2 and the hood cult classic Menace to Society. Between 1990 and 1993, so much had happened for High Five. They'd achieved their wildest dreams and released three successful albums while becoming international superstars. But even during those years, individually and collectively, things had already begun to slowly tear apart, with the young men going through a series of roller coaster moments some of which almost spelled the end of their careers before they'd barely launched. And it all began in 1990, when Toriano Easley was arrested. Toriano's arrest was the first tragedy that struck the group, and it happened when they were on the verge of fame. In September 1990, while the rest of the group were in New York doing publicity for their debut track, Toriano traveled home to Oklahoma to visit his family and friends. While in his hometown, he got into a physical fight with someone he was acquainted with. Things got so heated during this fight that a gun was pulled. According to his confession, Toriando said he meant to pass the weapon to his friend, but he was suddenly attacked. 
The trigger was pulled by accident, and unfortunately, the bullet hit and killed one of his friends. Poriana was charged with first-degree murder and sentenced to 10 years in prison. At the time, he was just 17 years old when this unfortunate incident occurred. He was then replaced with Bronx native Treston Irby, known for his silky baritone voice. The second tragedy that struck High Five occurred in 1992, shortly after the release of the group's second studio album. At the time, the group members were traveling between radio stations to promote the new album, and on their way back from the interview, they had a car accident that cost them one of their founding members. The accident left Roderick Pooh Clark paralyzed from the chest down, and High Five was down one member. Fortunately, no one else in the group suffered permanent damage from the accident, but it took a while before the young men could get back on their feet and go back to recording music. But even early on in their success and rise, High Five was experiencing levels of turmoil within the group. Sometimes their feuds got so bad that they temporarily broke apart. For example, Doreen, one of their fallouts, Russell Neal, left the group to start a solo career just before their second album was released, but rejoined after the accident that left Pooh paralyzed. After releasing their second album, the group fulfilled their contract with Jive Records, which ultimately resulted in a dispute over royalties. Dissatisfied, Russell left the group for good this time. He was replaced by Shannon Gill, and the group left Jive Records to sign another contract with Giant Records. Unknown to them, this was the beginning of a whole other set of problems. Instead of managing the group as a whole, Giant Records focused more on building a solo career for Tony Thompson, the group's lead singer and one of its founding members. The label started preparations for Tony's debut solo album, dashing High Five's hope of releasing a fourth studio album. As a result, the group disbanded in 1994, while Tony pursued a solo career with Giant Records. After the group disbanded, Tony's solo career kicked off with his debut album, Sexational, in 1995, which was a success. Two years later, the now-solo artist left Giant Records and signed with Bad Boy Records, but he stayed there only three years before leaving to create his own record label, In Depth. Being the only member of High Five still in the spotlight, Tony seemed to have his life figured out, but that didn't last very long. Tony attempted to reincarnate his former group with four new members, including his younger brother Jordan. The new High Five released an album in 2005 titled The Return. However, Tony's old bandmates, to put it lightly, were not pleased with this, and they filed a lawsuit against him for illegally using their trademark name. This lawsuit was bad news for Tony's new group, as it stopped their record sales. Ultimately, this group was disbanded as well. After the lawsuit, Tony's career was adversely affected, and he couldn't seem to find success anywhere, not with his solo career nor his record label. The ordeal took its toll on Tony, and he developed an addiction problem. He continued struggling with addiction until he passed in 2007 after inhaling a toxic amount of Freon. At this point, it felt like the High Five members had experienced all the tragedy in the world, but unknown to them, more was coming. Tristan Irby, Toriano Easley's replacement, was a victim of tragedy barely two years after Tony's painful demise. The unfortunate event happened in August 2009, while Tristan was performing at a club in New Haven, Connecticut. Tristan at the time was performing gigs to support his career as a solo artist. But on this particular occasion, he was shot five times. He sustained severe wounds and, for a while, no one was sure he would make it out alive. Miraculously, he survived the ordeal and is alive and well today. Perhaps the most shocking story was when Russell Neal was charged with the murder of his wife and the mother of his two sons, Catherine Martinez. In July 2014, Russell Neal walked into a police station and confessed to getting into a fight with his wife, but he stated that she needed medical attention and demanded a lawyer. When the police got to Martinez's Houston apartment where the incident occurred, she was found dead with multiple stab wounds and blunt force injuries. At the time of their arrival, the police found out that she had been dead for at least two days already. Russell was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. However, 
he has yet to serve any time because he was found unfit to stand trial on account of insanity. Prosecutors continue to insist that Russell constantly abused his late wife physically and was fully aware of his actions when he murdered her in cold blood. Regardless of their claims, the ex-superstar is still considered mentally unstable and has been admitted to a mental institution at Rusk State Hospital in Texas. Today, the only surviving members of High Five are Tristan Irby, Shannon Gill, and Marcus Sanders, who happens to be the only founding member that has not been directly affected by any tragedy. Before he died in 2007, Tony was planning a High Five reunion, but sadly, he wasn't able to see it through. However, his dream came to fruition in 2012. The three surviving members of the High Five reincarnated the group with Treston as its leader. The band was reformed with two new members, Andre Ramsier, known as Dre Wanda, and Farrakh Evans, although Dre Wanda has been replaced by Billy Covington. Of course, like all of these old-school groups that introduced new members that weren't a part of the original group's best years, The new High Five is not the one that rose to stardom in the 1990s. But after all the tragedies they've endured over the years, some things are bound to be irrevocably different.